Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This episode, we're gonna be diving back into the uh, 1972 C10 bed here and gonna be getting the roll pan modified for the exhaust tips and also going to be getting it fully welded in place. Um, if you notice the Camaro behind me, that's no big deal. Just doing the 100 mile engine break in, uh, oil change on it, and it's also developed a rear axle pinion leak, which I'm gonna have to deal with that. But it's just routine maintenance on that. Not gonna do a video on it because I'm not gonna bore you with it. So back to the 72 C10. Um, so I've had one or two questions about doing a bolt in type, and I'm sorry guys, unfortunately, I'm gonna do a full weld in on this. So as far as figuring out tabs and way to, uh, to bolt one in, if you've already got a finished painted truck, I'm not gonna be able to help you out much there. Maybe you can take some ideas that might work for you, but hopefully there's some other videos out there that can show you how to do one for a bolt and install. This one's gonna be a full weld in. Uh, obviously it's not painted, so I can paint it. And obviously for kind of the more finished look. I like the idea and how it's gonna look if it's fully welded in and it's gonna be more structurally sound as well. So, uh, without more boring talk on what I plan to do with it, let's just get into it and uh, show you guys what I've done so far. All right, let's get into boxing these outlets where I've got it cut out for my exhaust tips. And I have already gotten my pieces cut out since this isn't Kindigate design and I don't have a plasma table. I've got to cut these out by hand and what I do is I just take a template, mark it on my larger sheet of sheet metal and then I rough cut them with a die grinder um, close to my mark and then I come in with one of these and finish them off and take them right down to where my mark is and then that gets them pretty close. I mean, I'm probably not gonna build space shuttles this way, but I mean, I can make it so all the pieces are essentially the same size. All right, and then now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my pieces in place here hold them in place however I can, and just tack them in place while the bed is still on the stand. And why I say that is because this stand here is perfectly level. The bed sitting on the stand is level. And so essentially it would be how it is on the truck level sitting on the frame. And why I want to do it that way is so I can use a level on my pieces right here so that everything is kind of perpendicular and level with the bottom of the bed. So the exhaust tips will be level as well, if that makes any sense. Because if I were to take this off and then tack everything up and then weld it in place, uh, the outlet that I've got might not exactly be level and I want this to be perfectly level. Okay, I've got everything now in here square this way, this way, this way, on all three axes. And my tip still fits with roughly, I mean, there is definitely some movement in there you can do before it hits. So that should work. Theoretically, now I'm going to tack this in place, do the same thing to the other side, and then come back, take this off, which is pretty easy. Just pop the Clecos off, a couple of vice grips on the ends, and then fully weld it up, grind it, smooth it out, and clean it up. Here it is after I hit it with about nine tack welds. And from this point, I can do the other side and then take this whole panel off and finish welding it up. So I'm going to also try and weld this really, really slow. I'm really hoping to keep distortion to a minimum on this. I'm going to hammer and dolly what I can to kind of stretch the weld and relax it out. Hopefully it turns out good when I'm done. Okay, got the roll pan off. 
and yes, I may have dropped it, but that's another story. I'm gonna start welding this up, and I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do that before I actually do it and explain that. So I'm going to weld along here, along here, along here, but then on the insides of this, I'm going to actually weld right here, and right here and why I'm going to do that is so it's a lot easier to grind and finish because if I weld in these seams right here it's gonna be a lot harder to keep this flat grind the weld out if I do it for the back side as like right here it's a lot easier to grind this and round it over and keep it more dimensionally stable how I want to keep it if that makes sense basically have nice radius edges here 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 but keep this a nice and sharp 90 degree edge so the tips still fit really well. So enough of me talking, I am going to slowly start welding this up on both sides and then going to come back and grind it all and show you guys the finished result. And you know what, before I start welding, I just noticed something that's gonna drive me absolutely fucking nuts and these are going to look nice and radius and smooth. And you've got this shit where the roll pan is manufactured, where the license plate recess is. And this stuff is just cheap ass looking. So I'm actually going to end up welding all this up here and grinding and radiusing that all nice and smooth as well. Otherwise, every time I look at that, I'll think, fuck me, I should have fixed that. So, I'm gonna do that now. Okay, I got all my welding done and did some rough grinding. Got the license plate pocket, nice and beveled edge around there. Um, I'm gonna round this off just a little bit more just so it looks a little bit cleaner and the same with the exhaust pockets here. There is a rounded edge. I'm gonna round that just a little bit more just so it's not quite such a sharp edge. Now on to the other part, which was how to attach this to the bed. Um, I've come up with a solution to that. If you guys remember the previous video, the solution problem was the bolts that go through on the lower part of the hinge in here and over there, you get the top bolts, the tailgate down, but the bottom bolts are right here and you have to remove one hinge in order to get the tailgate off. So what I've done is I've actually slotted out the inside of this roll pan just enough to where I can get a socket and extension on from underneath. Now, I really can't get a good camera angle at this just because it's embedded in there, but the bolt is right there and I've already tested this more than once, but yes, I can get an extension and a wobbly on there with a ratchet and I can get that bolt out without too much effort. Now, would I have liked a little bit easier solution than that? Yes. I mean, it's gonna be tight there when the exhaust tips are in place and everything else, but you know, if the socket extension is wrapped with some tape, it won't scratch the paint. And this way I can permanently weld this onto the bed and not have to worry about issues with it flexing, coming off, whatever. Um, and that's what I initially wanted was between the damage to the bed here and just overall fitment, I wanted to be able to weld this completely solid. That way I can metal work and body work this to get it very smooth and also be able to attach it along inside there. And as you guys can see, I've already punched those holes out to spot weld it in place. After I get this piece on, well, I shouldn't say on, after I get this piece somewhat tacked in place, then I can pull my hinge, then I can pull my tailgate, and then I can completely come back here and finish weld this in place, and it will be in its permanent home. I think I covered this in a previous video, but I'm just gonna show you guys, because it's been a long time since I've had it on the channel. Um, 
this is what I use to do some flanging and also to punch the holes for spot welding. Punches nice clean holes and this is some pretty thick sheet metal so the air pressure has to be upwards of about 100 psi to do it but if you're flanging or doing sheet metal the flanging side is over here and the punch is over here 100 psi and it just punches holes out like a paper punch does with paper and this wasn't that expensive of a tool i think i paid around 100 bucks for this when i bought it but i mean if you don't have access to one of these you can always cut them out with your spot weld cutter or a couple other methods. Drill is kind of rough. I wouldn't use a drill to do it, but there are other ways to do it without the tool. Fast forward a few minutes and got a couple spot welds on each side holding it in place. Give you an idea of what it'll look like when it's all finished up. Still have to adjust the tailgate a little bit. It hangs a little bit low on the left side. So if you guys are seeing a little bit of alignment issue, that still has to be fixed. And it's on the list of to-dos. And that gives you a good idea of what it's going to look like. When it is all finished up, placement, who knows if I'm going to have it out here or recess them back a little bit here, but there's plenty of room. I mean, it obviously I'm wiggling around a little bit. It's not going to rub, not going to hit. So far, everything is coming together good on the real pan. So now the big job is going to be see if my hinge access really works in a real life scenario. Pull that hinge off, or maybe this hinge off. I like doing that hinge for some reason. Pull that hinge off, pull the tailgate off, and then uh, do all the finish welding on the roll pan. Get everything ground down, get the welds cleaned up, and hit it with the DA sander, and eh, the lower half at least will be ready for body work. All right, well, it looked like success to me. Getting the hinge off on that side really wasn't that big a deal. It was, I mean, a little bit more of a pain in the ass than I like, but on the newer shit I have to work on every day, it's a lot worse than this. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about it. This will give you a better idea. Um, obviously, I'll clean this up a little bit, but you can see the pocket that I cut out from the roll pan in order to access this bolt right there. And I probably didn't have to cut out such a big hole, but I mean... I like stuff easy, so if I got a bigger access or I get to it, it's going to make me happier in the end, especially if I have to take this tailgate off more than a couple more times. So now, more fun stuff, more welding, more grinding, more welding, more grinding. So you have your panel in place, you're ready to spot weld it, and you've got a little bit of a gap. What do you do? Well, that's where these big clamps come into play. Definitely a must have of clamps like this in different sizes if you're doing a lot of sheet metal. I uh, had to add a little bit of wood on here to uh, fill this gap right here so don't put pressure here. But yeah, basically clamp those down and it fills the gap on your metal. So I'm gonna hit this little hole with a spot weld and then I'm gonna move out from the center out and if I need to clamp it while I weld, I will do so. All right, so sides are tacked in place and the uh, full rear part of it here is completely spot welded in place. Gonna have to grind down these spot welds, clean that up and then finish welding and metal finishing the two seams here and here. So I'm gonna get to doing that, but that will be on a future video where this is all finished up. One more thing I'd like to point out is these hinges. Um, this side is off over here. And as you can see, I had to open these up quite a bit because I don't think 
the blind nuts are located correctly in the side or something is off because the tailgate was sitting really low. It was not lining up here. And I've actually got to modify this a little bit more. I'm gonna end up welding these up a little bit and opening them up in a different spot. So the tailgate fits nice and flush up here. And then I have a nice straight gap across the bottom here. But one thing I want to mention is this is the original style hinge and I don't really like these it's metal on metal obviously paint will rub right off uh, metal on metal surface rust will start to form I noticed they do make a couple of different styles of this and one of them has kind of a Delrin type bushing to where you're not going to have a metal to metal type contact so I'm going to probably definitely order a set of those. Um, when I get those, I will definitely put them on the channel so you guys can see them. Uh, I believe they'll work out a lot better. It's more of an actual type hinge. It has an actual rotating spot on it to where um, it actually rotates. Plus you will not have metal to metal contact. So there you have it. That is how I am uh, doing my roll pan on my truck. That's how I'm installing it. I'm sure there's a lot of other ways to do it. Um, kind of curious how some other guys have worked out the whole hinge situation, how they access the bolts, if they did it similar or they did it a different way. I really didn't do any research on it or do any Google searching or video watching. I just kind of looked at it and thought this is the best way to do it uh, for myself, easy and access the bolts is fairly easy so that's how i did it um next video on the truck series either going to be getting into painting the fenders or going to be finishing up the metal work on the bed here either way definitely a lot more c10 videos to come and also wanted to point out the time between my videos is kind of getting a little bit further apart just because the time of year is now into spring early summer and I'm completely inundated by yard work. So I'm spending a lot more time outside than in my shop lately. And until I get caught up on that, uh, the videos might be a little bit further apart. But rest assured, they're still going to be coming. Uh, definitely not going to uh, quit working in here. So uh, just be patient. I'll definitely have more videos to come in the future. And hopefully someday this truck will be built. <laughs> Maybe. So thanks again for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next time.